Hello and welcome to The Inner View. I'm your new host, Su Jung Pei, and I hope to bring you insightful interviews that truly provide an inner view of our guests. And our guest joining us today is Ken Mok, the television producer touted as the godfather of reality TV. He's also attracting a lot of attention from Hollywood, and today he'll be providing us with insights on American film and television production. So without further ado, let's meet him. Hi Ken, how are you today? Good, thank you for having me today. Thank Susan. you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedule to join us on the interview. My pleasure. Uh, so you're here in Korea to promote the film that you produced, Joy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it actually part of a producer's job to take part in the overseas promotion? Is that usual? Uh, you know, usually it is the stars. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, because of the schedule, mm. uh, all the stars in the film are now moving on to their next projects and they're around right, the world right. and around the country shooting. Because Joy um, premiered in December in yes, America. Yes, it, it, it yeah. premiered in December at Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, so all the press that was done by then was, was back then. Right. Uh, so sometimes they use the producers to, to help promote the movie. I think in this case, for me in particular, because I was Asian, mm. I have a connection to Asia. Uh, I have a connection to Korea on, on many levels. My wife is Korean. Yeah. Uh, and she's a very well-known uh, author, a Korean author. She writes about Korean history. And mm -hmm. uh, coincidentally, she's here with me doing her own press because... Uh, the translation of her uh, her book called In the Absence of Sun mm. uh, is being released in uh, in Korea today. Oh, wow. Yeah, so a she's... Happy coincidence. Yeah, so it's great. And that yeah. book details her rescue of her relatives from North Korea, which is a very dramatic story in itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that book will be made into its own f film. Uh, I would not doubt if it was not made here in Korea. Uh, so I have a connection to Korea that way through family. Uh, I've also been here a number of times. Uh, the last time I was here was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we shot America's Next Top Model here. I saw that episode. Yes, and we had a great, uh, wonderful experience here, uh, shooting here. Uh, one of our most successful ever. We had a fantastic final runway show here too. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I really love coming to, to Asia, especially love coming to Seoul. Mm. Do you have a busy schedule while you're here? A very short schedule. I just oh. flew in yesterday. I'm here for the premiere for right. tonight's event. Then I'm back to the United States tomorrow. That's a shame, but we hope to see you back again. I, I will definitely be back again. All right. So let's talk about your film, Joy, yes. then. It's got quite the star-studded lineup. You've mm. got the lovely Miss Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Uh, Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro, yeah. uh, along with the director, David O. Russell. Mm -hmm. Now, those four had worked together a couple of times before. Yes. So how easy or difficult was it to bring them back together for this project? Weren't they sick of each other by this point? Well, very, very easy. I mean, I think, <laughs> really? you know, the great thing about this film is once we got a director on board and it was mm. David, uh, we basically had a full package because okay. uh, David kind of brings his own repertory company with him and mm -hmm. that's Robert and that's Jennifer and, and so on and so forth and Bradley. Uh, and, you know, that's just a, you know, a blessing to have when mm -hmm. you have a director that brings not only his crew but the cast as well. And right. it, it's very simple because David is such a talented uh, director and a talented writer uh, that actors love working with him. Mm. I think he's an auteur in, in, in every sense of the word. Uh, he's a true artist. He has a very unique vision of what he brings to the table with every film that he does. And he creates incredibly wonderful, vivid characters uh, that actors really respond to. Mm. So it's very easy for him to attract a cast and obviously to attract a cast of actors and actresses who he's worked with before that he has a shorthand with that he really understands them through and through in their nuances. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was a very easy film to put together. Okay, and how are you connected to David? Uh, I'm connected to the film because the story was a story I found myself. Right. Uh, I'm very good friends with Joy Mangano, the mm -hmm. real Joy. Uh, she was a, a person that I became friends with a number of years ago when I hired her to be a judge on a, uh, a reality series that I did was about inventors. It was kind of before ah, Shark Tank. I see. Right, right. And uh, we just hit it off right away. And mm. when we had lunch one day, uh, I asked her about her personal history because she's this very kind of down to earth housewife, a mother of three. And I asked her how this woman from Long Island, this very simple housewife, became such a successful entrepreneur who generates you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year in revenue. Mm. And she told me this incredible, crazy story. 
uh, about how she did it, right. uh, which you see in the film. And I immediately said to her after she told me the story, I said, uh, this is a movie. And mm. I'm going to pursue it, and I'm going to try to make it into a film. Okay. And I spent several years, you know, developing the project. Uh, fortunately, people at Fox thought uh, the same thing, uh, and uh, we developed it with Davis Entertainment. We developed the script, uh, worked very hard on that, got that out into the marketplace, and right away we had tremendous industry from directors, from actors, mm. from actresses. Everybody wanted to do this film. Nice. And then David came in and said, "Look, I want to do it with Jennifer," and we right. immediately said yes. Oh, so he's the one that came to you and said he wanted to do this yes. project. Absolutely. Okay. So how was it working with him and the rest of the cast so closely? Oh, it was what terrific. Like? Uh, you know, y your job as a producer, you know, uh, is to really support the, uh, the vision of the director. Mm. Uh, David always has a very specific vision when he comes to his film, so that's what we were there to do. Uh, and we also shared a very common bond, an interesting common bond. It turns out that we're both from the same hometown in, oh, you in are. New York, yes, Larchmont, New York. Uh, we uh, grew up very near each other. We went to the same elementary school. We went to the same junior wow. high school. We went to the same high school. Uh, so did my sister. Uh, so we, we uh, have that in common. It and was meant to be. It was meant to be, yes. <laughs> it was great. Okay. Well, we actually went to the VIP premiere of Joy in Seoul. So mm -hmm. we're going to take a look at a clip of that before we continue with our talk. Sure. 그 여성의 그 성공 일대기를 이렇게 그린 영화인 것 같은데 어떻게 보면 무거울 수도 있었던 내용인데 되게 유쾌하게 잘 그려낸 것 같고 일하는 여성들에게 한 번쯤 권해주고 싶은 그런 영화고요 다시 한번 도전해 볼수 있는 용기를 가질 수 있는 작을 많이 얻고 가는 것 같아요. The VIP premiere of the movie Joy took place at CGV Wangshimni on March 2nd. The biographical comedy drama film centers on a woman who built a business empire despite various hardships and it attracted numerous moviegoers. The red carpet event began and the crowd waited in high anticipation for Ken Mok's arrival. Uh, my name is Ken Mok, I'm the producer of Joy. I'm so happy to be here in Seoul to join you guys today for the premiere of uh, this wonderful movie. Korean celebrities also showed up to check out the movie that is causing a lot of hype. Inside the theater, yeah. producer Ken Mok shared his thoughts on the release Hi. of Joy. Why I'm so excited to be part of this film and to produce this film and to have come out to Asia, especially to Seoul, uh, for the premiere. Very lucky that they both kind of came out in Korea at the same time, so this is sort of like a mini honeymoon for us. So I'm personally, I'm interested about what makes a difference in the in Asian leadership model or the American leadership model, in particular in women leadership, entrepreneurship. So Joy had been in the spotlight even before release because of the star-studded cast and the mm -hmm. director David O. Russell. Um, but many people may not have been so aware of the story. Um, so could you tell us briefly about the plot of Joy? Uh, the plot of Joy is, is, is simply about a woman who uh, comes from very humble beginnings, very mm -hmm. difficult circumstances, uh, is really burdened by life, uh, by family. Uh, by the pressures of being a single mother of three children. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really the story of how this woman who had everything against her in life was able to fight through uh, all of those obstacles and become one of the most successful entrepreneurs in American history uh, through her pure smarts, her persistence, uh, and her desire to make something of herself, to live uh, in David's words, an authentic life. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this movie details her journey uh, in a very emotionally honest way. Okay. So you told me earlier that you met Joy through a reality TV program that yes. you produced. Um, and how did you, how was her reaction when you told her you wanted to make a full length feature film about her life? You know, I, I, she actually wasn't surprised because really? when she was telling me her, her life story, she goes, My story is a movie in itself. It's, mm. it's a, it is a movie. <laughs> And I said, okay, tell me your story. Mm -hmm. So when I said, look, I really want to pursue it as a feature, I don't think she was surprised. I think she understood in, innately that the elements of her life story really made for a good film as mm -hmm. well. 
But I, I think, with, obviously, when we got David O. Russell and Jennifer yeah. Lawrence to play her, uh, I think that was, that was a bit overwhelming for her. I think she was beyond thrilled. What about when she heard that Jennifer Lawrence was cast in her role? It was fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a dream come true. Who wouldn't want Jennifer Lawrence to play you in the movie? Exactly. I'd love Jennifer Lawrence to play me in a movie. <laughs> I was going to ask, actually, if someone yeah. made a movie about your life, who yeah, would star yeah, in it? Yeah. Well, I, don't well, I don't know. You're not sure? Yeah. Have a think about that I'll one. think about that. <laughs> Um, and did you think the movie would be as successful as it was? I believed it grossed nearly $100 million. So far, yeah, mm. worldwide. Uh, I, I think it's very gratifying to, to see people responding to it. Uh, mm. You know, I think it's a story that has a very positive message. Uh, and, you know, I think especially, you know, uh, in the Asian market, I think it, it, it would resonate. You know, I've said to everybody before that, you know, this is a movie that everybody calls, you know, the uh, story of the American dream. Mm. But really what it is, it really is the Asian dream. Uh, right. Because I think the 20th century was the American century. I think the 21st century is the Asian century. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Korea has helped leading that way uh, in terms of innovation, in terms of invention, in terms of commerce. Uh, you know, you hear so many stories uh, every day of people across the region uh, whether it be men or women who have Joy's story. And, mm. uh, uh, you know, in China, it's, it's Jack Ma, you know, who I think 15 years ago was a, a school teacher, and then he's right. become this multi-billionaire. I think here in Korea, I think uh, there's a woman, Kim sung Ju, who is the, runs uh, MCM. Uh, I got to know her a little bit when we were shooting Top Model here, and I had dinner with her, and I got to hear her story. And uh, it was remarkable mm. uh, what she had done. I, I don't know if you're familiar with her story, but this is a woman who defied her family, uh, wanted to go into business, went to New York, uh, started at the bottom of at Bloomingdale's as a mm -hmm. trainee, uh, came back to Korea, found this defunct uh, German company, MCM, uh, took that over, and now has turned it into a global brand. Mm. And so her story is different from Joy's, but her story is very much the same as Joy's. Right. And uh, you know, at the VIP premiere, as, as you know, we had you know three or four women uh, who had similar stories to Joy. Women right. who in Korea who have pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and have mm. become CEOs of their own very successful companies. So I think the movie really has a, a, a incredible resonant message. Mm. Uh, to uh, men and women everywhere, especially women in Korea. I think uh, this century is the century for women in Korea to right. now finally come into her own, to break through the ce glass ceiling and become their own success stories. I completely agree. Yeah. So I think there's something about that rags to riches story that resonates with everybody around yeah. the world. Yeah. And, I think, and I think, you know, uh, the, the structure of Joy's story is, mm. is very Asian in a lot of ways. You know, okay. she, she, she lives in a multi-generational family. Uh, she's raising her children, she's supporting her parents, mm. she's supporting her grandparents. She sacrifices herself for the good of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she decides to pursue her own personal dream. And she has her friends and her family there to help support her and in some ways uh, serve as obstacles. Mm. Uh, but with all of that together, she's able to achieve what she wants to achieve. All right. Such a fantastic story. Yeah. Very heartwarming. It is. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about uh, production in Hollywood then. Yeah. Now, when, when a lot of people, including myself, we watch a film, we look at the ending credits, we know mm -hmm. what the director does, yeah. we know what the editor does, we know what the soundtrack guy does, but yeah. we're not always sure what the producer yes. does. It seems like this very broad umbrella term. Yes. Could you explain exactly what it is that a producer does? Well, a producer, the term producer is a very broad term because mm. it involves everything. The producer really is the, the glue that pulls the pieces of the of the picture together. Mm. Uh, the producer may initiate the story and once he or she initiates the story uh, he has to go get the financing of the film, he has to get a script, he has to get a script made, he's got to develop, he's got to get the director on board, the casting. All of those things is mm -hmm. the producer and it takes a tremendous amount of energy and hard work and persistence to make that happen. Must so it do. all starts with the producer. Right. And then once a director comes up, uh, on board, if you're lucky enough to get a, a director like a David O. Russell, then your job is, as, as the producer is to support the vision of the director. Mm -hmm. And that's when the director takes over. Right. So right. the first half of the movie really is the producers mm -hmm. to get the project going, to get breathe life into it, to get it off the ground. Right. The second half of the movie is the directors. When the director comes on board, then the producer kind of steps aside, supports the director, and the director kind of takes it home. Okay, but there are so many different things that you're doing. It's yes. not a small job, is it? Does it ever get 
way too stressful for you? You know, it's a very stressful job. Mm. I, you know, I think if you work in, in the, the television or the film business in Hollywood, you really have to be a self-starter. Mm. Uh, you have to be a person who's a, an entrepreneur. Uh, you have to be a person who has a very thick skin, who's not going to take no for an answer. Uh, and, you know, usually, you know, well, not usually, but the hard work pays off the longer you, you, you go at it. Okay. Uh, that's really the key. And what's your favorite part of the whole production process? You know, I love seeing a, a feature or a project come together and come mm -hmm. to fruition. And it's always, you know, great when you walk on the set for the first day and you just realize all the hard work I put into it has made this thing come true. Mm. And then even better is when the film comes out better than you thought it would. Right. Uh, and is that usually the case? That is not usually the case. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a minor miracle. First of all, it's a minor miracle to get a film made. Mm -hmm. It's a major miracle if the film comes out as good or better than you expected. Okay. So this is a major miracle, Joy. Um, I imagine that the first step is coming up with a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Joy, you said the idea came to you in the form, in the form of Joy Mangano yeah. herself. Yeah. Uh, but where else can these ideas come from? Where do you get your inspiration from? How do you decide on what project to do? You know, uh, inspiration comes in many forms. Uh, you know, luckily, as a, as a person who considers himself a storyteller, I have a good nose for what makes a good story and the mm -hmm. elements that make it. Uh, you know, this is the second feature I've done both of them which have been biopics. The first movie I did was a movie with Mark Wahlberg called Invincible and it was yeah. a true life football movie. Mm -hmm. I saw that story and immediately said oh, that's that has the makings of a great film. Mm. Same with Joy. So a lot of times you look into real life for inspiration. Right. I have another movie that's uh, probably going to be shooting this summer. Uh, another football film about the first black quarterback in the NFL mm -hmm. uh, which was an incredibly compelling story. Uh, that we now uh, have Terrence Howard attached to and John oh, wow. Travolta uh, and a very uh, talented director named Anthony Hemingway. So a lot of times you go to real life to find your inspiration. A lot of times you get inspired by actors or actresses or something you saw mm. that inspires a story. And there's a couple of other features that uh, were inspired by actors that I saw or some performance that I saw that really gave me the spark of an idea for a movie. Um, and so it comes from everywhere. You just okay. have to keep your, your eyes and ears open. Mm. Uh, you always have to be reading uh, newspapers, articles, watching different shows, reading books. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of that sort of kind of percolates in your mind. And something usually comes to the forefront at some point. Okay. So like a huge melting pot and then something comes to the top. Absolutely. All right, so your inspiration comes from everywhere. And then how does that turn into a script? How do you go about finding a screenwriter and what are the processes involved in writing a script? Uh, well, you know, in the past it, it would be myself, uh, you know, trying to find a writer to attach to some of these projects. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think in recent years I have now focused a lot on, my, on writing myself. Oh, you have? Yes, okay. and so the next movie that I'm doing is, is, is a project I've written, the oh, one wow. that's going to, with uh, John and, 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 uh, and Terrence. Uh, and two other movies that are lined up after that are both movies that I've written as well. Uh, it's much easier in the process of, as a producer when you have your own material mm -hmm. uh, that you can, uh, you know, take to the marketplace. Um, and so you have total control. And I, I like to be a person who controls the product from end to end. Right. And uh, luckily I've had good luck as a writer and uh, have, have had a knack for it. Um, so that's helped me tremendously. Okay, but do scripts ever just come to you first? Yes, there are a lot of times that, that scripts will come over the transom to me. Mm. Uh, there are a couple of them that I'm looking at right now uh, that have a lot of promise. Uh, or in the TV side, usually it's people that come in and have an idea that they want to pitch, especially if it's in the unscripted area. They'll come in, they'll pitch a format, they'll have a presentation that they have for you or some video content that they want to show of how the show would work. Right. Uh, so it comes off in, in, in all different, in different forms. Mm. So how did you go about writing your script for your upcoming film? I mean, it must be a very time consuming and difficult job, I imagine. You know, if the story is as compelling as you can find it, mm. usually, it, at least for me, it, it's, it, it comes across pretty easily. Okay. Uh, again, I've been very fortunate with that. I know there are some writers who take years to get their projects mm. uh, written and made. Uh, for me, it, it, it's, if once I research the story very well and I'm able to outline it, I can get a script out pretty quickly. Uh, in the last year and a half, I've written four features. Oh, wow. And, uh, 
And they're all coming to life? And luckily, all of them are coming, are coming to life right now. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. If someone else were to write the script, um, are you just overall reviewer? Do, they, do you request various versions? How does, it, how does that sound? Well, usually work? what a producer does with, with a writer is the writer, you know, if you initiate the story and you pitch the story to the writer, you mm. work with the writer on the research of the project, outlining the story, helping the writer with the script, giving notes to the writer after every draft, making sure that you and he or she are on the same page mm -hmm. totally until you get the script to a place where you feel, now we can bring it to the studio, now right. we can bring it to financers, now we can bring it to talent. So making sure your vision is all the same. Yes, you, you have to shepherd the project along. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how do you go about recruiting a director? Is it as easy as picking up the phone and calling a director that you admire, or do you have certain directors that you yeah. work with, or how does that work? The, the hardest part of getting a movie made is getting your script read. Okay. The easiest part is getting the script written. Really? Yes. Because it's funny, this is a business that's built off of scripts, mm. but nobody in Hollywood reads. Why is it, that? Because there's so much material that's floated out right, every day. Right. So you really have to convince people to get your script to move to the top of the pile. Mm. And even when you get it moved to the top of the pile, it takes months for people to read it. And so you'll wait a few months for a director to read it, that director will pass. Then you have to go to the next director. Right, and it takes another And another that's few why months. movies take so long to get made. I see, I see. So you really, you really have to persevere. You have to really find a way to get the, the, the material to a great uh, director or a great actor or actress and get them involved. And once you're able to get that going, then the project really accelerates. Mm. But that's the hardest part. Can you get somebody to read your script? So is that what it refers to when a script is left in development hell? Well, that can be various things. A lot of time development hell means that you've gotten the project into a studio mm. uh, and it's just going through endless net rounds of notes or it hasn't found the right star, it hasn't found right, the right, right director, and it just sits there and languishes. And that happens, uh, unfortunately, uh, an alarming number of times. Uh, for me, it's been I've been very spoiled. Both my films have gone from development to production, you know, within a couple of years. Okay. Uh, so... Knock wood, hopefully that happens again in the future. Hopefully. Um, and do you cast the actors and actresses together with the director? Uh, you know, in the case of Joy, no. You know, David came and brought his own, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, cast with him. Uh, you know, in the, in, in, the, in the version of Invincible, uh, we brought a director on. Uh, and once we got the director, we got the, the actor. Sometimes you get an actor on board first, and mm -hmm. then the actor finds a director for you. Right. There are various ways to, to go about doing it. Okay. Um, so as far as I know, there are systems in place to help production companies or protect production companies uh, from the potential risks of losses. Can you mm -hmm. tell us about some of those measures? You mean in terms of financing? Yes. Well, you know, a lot of times uh, you know, there are different ways of financing a film. You have to go through independent financiers. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to studios, uh, you know, which is the easiest way, obviously, if you go to you know, Fox or DreamWorks mm -hmm. or Warner Brothers. Uh, but there are a lot of independent financiers out there uh, who will, you know, invest in a movie. Uh, you'll get the movie made, and then you get picked up, uh, you know, a negative pickup where you, you get the film distributed. Right. Uh, and there are a lot of people out there who are looking to invest in film, a lot of independent financiers. And now there's a lot of Chinese money that's coming into the mm. marketplace as well. Uh, so there are a lot of avenues to go. Uh, and now the people like Netflix and Amazon and Hulu, all of those invest as well. Right. Uh, so it's a pretty fertile marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you think it is about Hollywood films in particular? It takes up 80% of the global market share. What are its main strengths or areas of appeal, do you think? That uh, the U.S. market, I mean, you know, look, it's, it, uh, Hollywood was invented in America, mm. uh, you know, in the very start with little filmmaking. Uh, and, you know, it's just such an industry which is, has been such a fabric of, of the U.S. US culture. Mm -hmm. And also in the 20th century, America was the, the most aspirational country in the world. Right. So people really want to see and get a glimpse of what the culture is in America. But I do think that that's shifting now. I think now as, uh, you know, uh, the world turns its eyes towards Asia mm. uh, and Korea and China, I think you're seeing a lot more of the, the, the material and content coming out of this part of the world. Uh, any American film now 
it's not just an American marketplace anymore, it's a global marketplace. Indeed. Asia is such an important part of that equation uh, and is going to be increasingly so as time goes on. And I really do think, uh, you know, in the future, uh, sooner than you think, I think you're going to see a lot more penetration in the U.S. market by Asian films, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the exporting of U.S. films uh, across the world. So let's talk about Asian films then. What do you think their strengths are? And what I, do you think would make them successful in America? You know, I think Korean, uh, you know, I, I, I love Korean uh, dramas. I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a great admirer of the Korean dramas here. I think the storytelling that the, the Korean writers and directors here do is fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the genre down beautifully. They really know how to push the buttons of the audience. They do. And, uh, those emotional buttons. Those emotional <laughs> buttons. Uh, and I think this is something that a lot of American producers are looking at. Okay. We, we all look at the Korean dramas now. There's so many of them that producers are taking to the U.S. now and trying to set up uh, in the U.S. because the telenovela is, is so popular here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think there's so much talent now in Asia and so much talent in Korea uh, that's being shared back and forth, not only on the TV drama side but on the film side as well. There's so many Asian titles, that uh, Korean titles, that have made into uh, American films and vice that's versa right. now. Yeah. And are there any common characteristics that you can think of um, that makes Asian films successful in America? You know, I think that any time that you can tell a very human story mm -hmm. and get people emotionally involved. Okay. So it's uh, the same as it's American It's the same. Films. It doesn't matter whether you're Asian or American. Mm. Uh, telling an emotionally engaging story is the key. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Now you've been called the godfather of reality TV. <laughs> you produced uh, Making the Band, which I think was the forerunner to all these singing audition programs yeah. that we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, you did Pussycat Dolls Present, mm -hmm. and of course your most successful hit so far, America's Next Top Model. Yes. Uh, it's reached cycle 22, I believe, which is yeah. absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, did you anticipate it being so successful? You know, you can never predict that kind of success. Mm. Uh, you know, when we made the show, we knew we made a good series and we thought it would uh, have some lasting success. Yeah. But did I think it would go 13 years and s still going strong? No, absolutely not. Uh, you know, the, fi the, the show has not only been successful in uh, the U.S., but it's now successful around the world. Mm -hmm. But we have over 20 franchises now wow. around the world, including one here, Korea's Indeed. Next Top Model. Yeah. Uh, and we have them in Australia and Great Britain and Thailand and uh, Africa's next top model is going on now. So uh, it's all the way around the world. Uh, and so it's been a true blessing. Uh, it's been a highlight of my career. Uh, it's allowed me to see the world mm -hmm. and travel the world and come to Korea and shoot in Korea as well as elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, and it's really given me the freedom to pursue uh, now in this phase of my life, the projects that I just really, really care about, mm -hmm. and, uh, which has been features. That's amazing. Yeah. By the way, when I did my first photo shoot in Budapest, all those tips from Tyra really came in. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. Smiles and stretch Smizing, your neck. Smiles, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all those into practice. <laughs> um, not just. Uh, TV shows about models, though, all kinds of reality TV shows, they're so, so popular still around yeah. the world. And why do you think that is? You know, I, I think it's, it's something that people can really relate to. You mm. know, the shows that I do especially are, are aspirational shows. The show itself allows people to achieve a dream, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's becoming a... It's a running theme here. A In singer, your movies right, right, and exactly, your TV right? shows as well. You know, I, I'm a very positive person. I'm yeah. a very, uh, you know, glass is half full type of person. Uh, those are the types of projects that I'm normally uh, drawn to. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not going to be a guy who produces a horror movie or, you know, s you know, a movie about kidnapping or some some horrible tragedy. Th right. It's just not something that I respond to personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to uh, respond to more positive, fun type of projects. So you really have to be passionate about your projects. You know, th that gives you your best chance of succeeding mm. when you really, really care about something. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't think it's coincidence that the, the screenplays I've written have, have uh, gotten a lot of traction now. Uh, you know, when you write a script and you write on spec, which is you're writing it for free, mm. hoping that someone will make it, you really have to believe in that project and you really have to care about it. When you do that and you put your heart and soul into something, mm. that gives you your best chance of succeeding. Okay. So any project that I do, I really have to care about. I know in my history, shows that I've done just really kind of for a paycheck, or just because it was a project to do, those projects have all failed. Mm. Uh, and it's not a coincidence because I really didn't put my heart and soul into it. The ones that have always succeeded are the ones that I've really cared about. Good advice there, good advice there. Yeah. Um, but reality TV shows, we love the drama, don't we? It's often sure. referred to as unscripted drama. Yes. Um, 
and the viewers love it, mm -hmm. it gets the votes, etc. But on the producing side, how is it having to respond to all these unexpected situations and these surprises lurking around every corner? Yeah, I, I think, you know, my, I always say to my producers, you know, the most difficult cast member that you'll ever have mm. is going to be the best asset you ever have. Right. <laughs> so a lot of times that when we're shooting and the producer comes to me and starts complaining, oh my God, this person is terrible. Mm. She won't cooperate or she's starting a fight here or she's getting in my face or she won't listen to me. I said, you're going to thank that person in six weeks because we're going to have great episodes out of that. So the biggest disaster ever is always the best thing. And I remember in particular there was one uh, story we were doing uh, Pussycat Dolls mm -hmm. and the night of the final audition the, in the very first episode when the girls were auditioning for Robin and she had to pick from these girls the, 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 the seven girls or eight girls that were going to go on the show somehow the day before flu hit everybody everybody was incredibly sick you had like oh, 20 really? girls that were literally throwing up and dehydrated <sighs> And the president of the network came to me and said, oh, my God, what are we going to do? You've got these people who have 103 degree temperature, 104 degree temperature. They're throwing up. They need IVs. Mm. I said, that's the best news I could ever <laughs> have. So I had an ambulance at the stage. Right. I had IVs in the side. I had mm -hmm. a doctor there. The girls would lie on the side. I had the beds down there. They hooked up IVs to their arms. <laughs> Then they would say, okay, go out and do your song. Mm. And they would, we would take the IV out of their arm. The girl would go out, sing her song, dance, then come off and collapse. Wow. Best TV ever. <laughs> and, and there were cameras everywhere. And there were cameras everywhere. But when I said this to the president of the network, she yeah. looked at me horrified, like, are you insane? I said, trust me, this is going to be the best TV series you've ever had. And sure enough, it was fantastic. You can't get enough of the drama, can no. you? No. We cannot. No. Um, as a television producer then, do you monitor, do you watch a lot of TV shows produced in other countries as well? Yes, I think you do. You always have to kind of look for uh, formats that, that, are, that work around the world. You know, typical example, you know, uh, American Idol, right? Mm -hmm. American Idol was a British format. It was, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, foreign formats are the pipeline now to TV. Mm. Uh, television networks don't take a lot of chances anymore. Right. So if the format worked in Israel or worked mm. in Korea or worked in France or worked in England, uh, that's the, the format that they'll take. Are there any TV shows in Korea that you think might be successful if modified to American audiences? Well, I, I can tell you I've looked at probably at least 100 Korean dramas mm -hmm. uh, and we're currently talking about bringing a couple of them to the U.S. right now okay. uh, to try to set up as an American series. Uh, so yes, we, we've looked at the Korean market very closely. Interesting. So hopefully we can look forward to some American adapted Korean TV shows in the future. A absolutely. All right. Let's talk about your production success then. Mm -hmm. um, you've climbed your way to the top. You've done various things, including yeah. being a, an assistant in the costume department of the Bill Cosby show, yeah. I believe. How was that? And how did you go from that to being where you are today? Uh, well, that, that was, you know, everybody starts off someplace. You mm. know, everybody will either start out as an assistant or a production assistant. That was my entry into the business. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I worked on that show for a year. And while I was there, uh, believe it or not, uh, I, Bill, Men Bill Cosby actually became a mentor of mine. And right. I had written a few Cosby scripts, and uh, he had read them. And then he ended up asking me to write a TV pilot for him. Oh, is that so? Yes. Wow. And, uh, and funnily enough, it was about uh, a, ch a Chinese girl who wanted to be a model mm. in defiance of her family. So okay. I wrote the, the project for him. Uh, we tried to sell it. I think we were a little bit before our time. Uh, but because of that, um, I had uh, found out about a, a training program at uh, one of the networks in uh, the U.S. called NBC. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had asked Mr. Cosby to uh, do a re give a recommendation for me there, and that really helped me get in. So, so it's all about who you know. It's about who you know. And mm. I got, at that time, I got very fortunate. Unfortunately, there's all these things have happened with Cosby since then yeah. uh, that are very, very sad. But mm. I, I can only say that at that time, uh, Mr. Cosby was very good to me. Okay. Because at the time, and even today, I can't imagine that there are that many Asian producers in film no. and television. Yeah. Was that a hindrance in any way? Did you face any discrimination? Well, you know, I will say that it was, the, it was difficult at the time. Mm. Um, 
I remember the first time that I got hired at NBC as an executive to oversee television series. Mm -hmm. And I went to my first, what's called the table reading of a, of a comedy, yeah. where the cast and the crew and the producers were there. And I was the person who was, that was supposed to evaluate the script and kind of give my thoughts to it. I do remember at that time, everybody looked at me like, who is this guy? Right. <laughs> they looked at me like I was some sort of alien. Uh, but I think the thing is, is that once you prove yourself mm. uh, and that people realize that creatively you, you know what you're talking about mm -hmm. and that you have something to contribute, uh, your ethnicity kind of goes away very quickly. And I found that I just had to persevere and that uh, once people got to know me and mm -hmm. uh, knew that I was a, a valuable asset to them, um, the, the issue of my ethnicity had disappeared. And, uh, I don't think it's really a factor anymore. Okay. You know? So once you've proven your worth, it doesn't really matter anymore. You know, it's like it's like Oprah Winfrey. Mm. You know, Oprah Winfrey is colorless. You know, uh, people just look at her as Oprah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, I think the the one color that Hollywood really respects is the color green, uh, right. which is about money, <laughs> and whoever can help make them money mm. uh, is somebody they will value. Okay. Well, you've trailblazed the way for so many Asian Americans, but around the world as well. So. They have you. you to thank for that. Um, and I'd like to ask you about your secrets to your career success. What do mm -hmm. you think it is that made you so successful in this industry? Uh, well, look, I, I think, again, it's, it has to do with perseverance. I think you really have to be entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be a self-starter. Yeah. Uh, and you have to have a very, very thick skin. Uh, everybody's going to say no. Everybody's mm. going to tell you you can't do this. Everybody's going to tell you you can't do that. You really just have to have blinders on right. and pursue what you want to do uh, and not let anybody get in the way. Uh, nobody writes your career except yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Uh, and if you have the talent and the desire and the willpower, uh, you will make it happen. It doesn't matter whether it's in television or film or you're creating a business or you're a singer. Mm. Uh, you have to have 100% belief in yourself right. and make that happen. I think that's something that I have, uh, you know, for good or bad, uh, I am just incredibly persistent. I'm very hardworking. Mm. Uh, I have a lot of self-discipline. Mm -hmm. um, I can feel that just talking with you right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's, a very, there's an author in the U.S., uh, I can't remember her name. She's, she's kind of known as the Tiger Mom. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said something that I found very interesting. She said she thinks there's three elements to somebody who's successful. Okay. Uh, one is they have to have an inferior, inferiority complex. Mm -hmm. Number two, they have to have a superiority complex. Okay. And that number seems three, yeah. And number three, they have to have self-discipline. Okay. And when she said that, it really registered with me because I, I have all three. Right. So I have the inferiority complex because I work in an industry where there's not a lot of Asian people. Mm -hmm. So I knew. I have bigger obstacles to overcome than everybody else. Right. Uh, I have the superiority complex because uh, I believe in myself tremendously, okay, and yeah. I think I have a lot to offer. To offer. Mm -hmm. And then I have the self-discipline to pursue that. Okay. And so when you have all three of those things, and mm. you do have the talent, nothing can stop you. Wise words indeed. Yeah. Now you're part of a very cultural family. Your wife is a writer, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. Heli Lee. Um, she's actually been on the interview before. Yeah. Um, do you inspire each other? Um, what do you get from her in terms of your work? Well, I, I'm very lucky to have uh, Heli as my wife. Mm. Um, you know, I married my best friend in life. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have done that. And she's an artist in her own rights. She's an incredibly talented writer. Uh, and we have tremendous, uh, not only friendship, but a, a, a tremendous respect for each other. Mm. She really is my muse, uh, and I think in a way I am her. Uh, so any project that I do, uh, Heli always is such a key component of that. Right. She reads my drafts. She mm. gives me notes on her, my drafts. She gives me advice on my projects. She helps me bring the projects to the, the market. She has projects that she's doing that I'm helping her with, and mm. I'm helping her structure her stories and such. So I, I honestly can say that I would not have the success I had today if it wasn't for Heli. Mm. Uh, we've been together for uh, quite a while now. And uh, we really do inspire each other. We really encourage each other uh, to, to, our, our, uh, to maximize our creative potential. Right. And so it's been a great partnership over the years. So it's not just emotional support she gives you as your wife, but also as a writer, she gives you a lot of inspiration, oh, artistic absolutely. wise. And her instincts and her, her judgment is, is really, uh, there's no one better. So we really are, we, we are best friends and partners. Amazing. Any plans to collaborate in the near future? We are. We, we're oh, doing nice. something right now that okay. we're collaborating on. Uh, she has a fantastic uh, 
a project called Macho Like Me, uh, in which in which ten years ago, uh, as an experiment, she decided to live life as a man for oh, six months. Okay. And she decided to document that with a documentary crew, and she was going to, I guess, turn it into a book mm. or a documentary. And now she's turned it into this one woman uh, multimedia show. Uh, she's actually performed it in LA to rave reviews. Wow. She's performing it this summer at the Edinburgh Festival. Nice. Uh, and now she's turning it into a scripted uh, series as well. Amazing. So yeah, so she's got a lot going on. All right, all right. I look forward to that. Yes. Um, and final question. Yeah. Uh, you've achieved so much. I feel like we've only scratched the surface mm. today, but is there anything left that you still want to do? You've done reality TV, you've done feature films. What is the ultimate dream if you have one? Uh, well, look, I'm, I'm writing, I am producing uh, uh, films. Uh, I will uh, direct a, a feature uh, that's going to come down the line. There's a, a project, a very special project that I have that I'll direct. Okay. Uh, but I'm also involved entrepreneurially mm. uh, outside of the, the, the entertainment industry. There's an app. Uh, that I'm building that's the CRM app that's in the transportation industry okay. uh, that we're starting to do internal testing on right now and I'm very very excited about th that as well uh, so you know my interests go far and wide they're just not limited to uh, TV or film mm. uh, my you know they go where my mind goes yeah. and whatever that is whether it's building a business or a TV show or a film um, you know if I feel passion for it I'm going to pursue it okay. and uh, there's a lot of life left ahead, and uh, I want to exploit it as best I can. Sounds like a very busy few years ahead of you. Yes. I'm really excited to see what will come out of that. And that's unfortunately all the time we have today. So thank you so much for joining us on the interview. Well, thank you. you it was a pleasure yourself. to be here. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your stay in Seoul. Absolutely and will. we hope to see you again soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.